Revelation chapter 21. Uh, you'll find it in your Bible there in the back right before the map and concordance. Revelation chapter 21. Y'all know how Gladys and my vacation usually work out. Well, several years ago, my mother bought tickets for the whole family. Uh, we were going on a once in a lifetime vacation together uh, on a cruise ship, a Viking cruise ship on rivers in Europe. And right after she bought the tickets, COVID hit and everything was shut down. While all the rest of the family have taken their vacations, Gladys and I are finally supposed to leave this afternoon and go on our vacation. But, you know, as our vacations normally happen, um, the ship we were supposed to go on, we got word two weeks ago, is broken down. And so they're going to put us on a different ship. The river we're supposed to be sailing on a lock in the river broke. And so they're going to have to put us on the boat 40 miles up the river because that was broke. The airline that we're supposed to fly into, we're supposed to be flying into Germany Friday. They had that computer glitch and all of Germany's airlines were shut down. Um, after a week of avoiding my brother's family, so I wouldn't be around those sick people. On Friday, I got sick, and the doctors now put me on antibiotics before we go on vacation. I was telling a friend about this the other day, and he said, Well, Jonah, when you get to Germany and get on that ship, they're going to throw you overboard just to save the boat and the rest of the passengers. I don't know about that, but I do know Germany has asked us not to come. The airlines all got together and said they'd pay for our next vacation as long as we agreed to drive and didn't fly there. Um, we've been talking about heaven for the past couple of weeks, and I have it on good authority that in heaven, all vacations work, and no one is sick, and ships and rivers don't break. Who ever heard of such a thing? If you happen to think about it, you can pray for Gladys, and I, I don't deserve a good time, perhaps, but she's convinced that she does. Speaking of which, right before, uh, night before last, I spilled some lemonade on the carpet, and she ended up working to clean the carpet yesterday. Last night, my CPAP machine leaked water on the floor, so she worked on that this morning. And while she did, she told me that the older I get, the more issues I seem to cause. I told her to suck it up, Buttercup, because I don't see things getting any better before we get to heaven. <laughs> I am convinced that the Lord invented old age to make us look forward to heaven more. Because otherwise, some of y'all would get comfortable down here and would never think about heaven at all. No wonder my prayers end each day with Calgon, take me away. And before y'all laugh too much, CJ and James end their, praise, uh, uh, end their prayers by saying, beam me up, Scotty. You spiritual folks may say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We all have our way of saying it, but it means the same. We're ready to get out of here and head to heaven. The other day, Gladys said she married me for better or worse, and there has to be some better coming sometime. <laughs> Isn't it great to know that this world as we know it is not the end all to end all? There is going to be a better place and a better fellowship for those who know the Lord. And hallelujah, we're going to have some better friends there because some of y'all getting on my last nerve. I wonder if that's why Gladys has been going around the house lately singing soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. No more crying there, we're going to see the king. No more husbands there, we're going to see the king. 
No more Christmas in the country or 4-H there. We are going to see the king. I don't know if that's the way that song's supposed to go, but that's the latest verse she has written. Revelation chapter 1 has in it for us some new promises, and I'm excited about it. Look there with me, if you will, please. Revelation chapter 21, beginning in verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne, look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. And the one seated on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. He also said, right. Because these words are faithful and true. And then he said to me, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowards, faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Let us pray. Lord God, as we study your word, I ask you to use it this morning to speak to us, to uh, touch our hearts and open our eyes. Lord, help us to see the reality what is just on the horizon, just out of reach and just out of sight. The Lord help us to remember the importance of that place. As we study your word this morning, I pray that you will make it real to us, that you will give me your words, and that you will speak here today, that we will be receptive and see ourselves reflected in the mirror of your word. Lord, touch our hearts and open our ears in Jesus. Amen. Amen. These verses tell us that the Lord is going to build, that he is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And no, it's not because I broke the old one. John wrote this before I was even born. Can you imagine a new heaven and a new earth? Oh, my word. How can God improve on what he has already built? For the first, for the last couple of weeks, we have looked at heaven and we have seen that in heaven we will have regrets. Because according to Romans 14, 12, we are told, so then each one of us will give an account of himself to God. And I have some regrets in my life. There are times I have let the Lord down. And there are things I've done I wish I hadn't. The things I didn't do I wish I had. Opportunities missed and things left unsaid. I have some regrets and when those are pointed out to me I am sure that there will be some tears of regret. But oh, praise God, according to verse 4, he's going to wipe away every tear. Don't you look forward to that day. No tears of regret. No tears of pain or sorrow or grief. He's going to wipe them all away. In heaven there will be rewards. And I believe that's part of the reason that Paul says in Philippians chapter 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. My friend, your experience in heaven will be impacted 
by your life here on earth and in heaven there will be no do-overs the bible says it is committed unto men once to die and then the judgment so i plead with you this morning make the most of your opportunity because this life is just preparation for what's coming next last week we looked at a couple more R's. In heaven there will, we will have relationships. We will know the people, the friends, and the family from earth who end up in heaven. And we will have better relationships with them than we ever did on earth. I, I have it on good authority. In heaven, Kevin is going to be a people person. Can you imagine? Can you imagine such a thing? In heaven, we will know people, the friends and family from earth who end up in heaven and we will have better relationships with them than we ever did on earth. No misunderstandings, no wondering what they really meant by what they said. And in heaven there will be refreshments. Be quiet, Dan. We don't have the time. In heaven there will be refreshments. We talked about the wedding feast of the Lamb. And in heaven there will be responsibilities. There will be jobs for us to do. We will have a purpose and enjoy a sense of accomplishment for a job well done. And I want you to know that we will enjoy some more R's in heaven as well. For one, in heaven, we will be reunited with God. Look there again, if you will, please. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity. And he will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and will be their God. God's dwelling place will be with man. Turn to somebody near you and tell them God's dwelling place will be with man. Can you imagine? God's dwelling place will be with man. Save your place and turn with me please to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and they hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the God so the Lord God called out to man and said to him, where are you? Back in the Garden of Eden, God used to come down and walk with man. He used to have fellowship with man. He used to talk with man. Can you imagine the times of sharing and the times of fellowship they must have enjoyed? As they walked together, on the paths of the Garden of Eden and laughed at the frolicking and the antics of the animals. What times of fellowship they must have enjoyed, what times of closeness they must have had. But then the Bible tells us that sin entered the picture and that fellowship was destroyed. And for the first time in all of creation, there was a separation between God and man. A man was kicked out of the garden and an angel was put there at the gate and man was no longer allowed in. And that fellowship with God was gone. For the first time in all of his life, man was alone. That fellowship was destroyed. But in the new heaven and the new earth, that relationship will be restored because God's dwelling will be with man. Can you imagine? We're not going to have to pray anymore. We'll be able to talk to God face to face. And no longer will we wring our hands and have to wonder and worry, God, did I hear you say that right? God, am I discerning your will properly? God, am I hearing you correctly? Lord, is this really what you want me to do? There'll be no questioning, no doubting, no wringing of hands. 
because God will be dwelling with man and we will be able to hear him clearly. Bonnie won't have to ask me if we're doing Christmas in the country in another year because the Lord will tell her directly. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I am fully known. No more questioning, wondering, and waiting because we will be reunited with God. And second, things will be restored. Revelation chapter 21 tells us that God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. That things are going to be restored and put back like they were, or even better than they were in the beginning. Save the place, turn one the place to Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 6. Brian, you give me a bottle of water, please. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 6. The wolf will dwell with the lamb. And the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf, the young lion, and the fatted calf will be together, and the child will lead them. The cow and the bear with great will graze, their young ones will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like cattle. An infant will play beside the cobra. Thank you very much. An infant will play beside the cobra's pit, and a toddler will put his hand into a snake's den. They will not harm or destroy each other on my entire holy mountain. For the land will be as full of the knowledge of the Lord as the sea is filled with water. Excuse me. Can you imagine? In the new millennium and in the new heaven. In the new millennium. In the new heaven and the new earth. Things will be restored on the new earth there will be no shark bites there will be no alligator attacks there will be no afternoon thunderstorms this past week i was dumping a trailer at a landfill down in south florida and i think i was the next to the last truck they led on top of the hill because the storm was coming in i was putting the trailer down closing the door rolling up the tarp when a crack of Lightning hit right over my head, scared me to death. Can you imagine in the new heaven and the new earth, no afternoon thunderstorms, no air conditioners burning out. Things will be made new. There'll be none of that, no traffic. You want to see a crowd? The only crowds you'll see there will be at the throne of God where you see people gathering to worship and thanking him for what he has done for them. In heaven, there will be no hospitals, no surgery, no sickness, no funeral homes. Everything is going to be restored. Can you imagine visiting with God in the new heaven and on the new earth? Can you imagine viewing the stars and the planets and the constellations with no light pollution? Can you imagine working a garden with no weeds? Can you imagine in the new heaven all of us having new bodies? I, I dream in the new heaven with my new body I will have a chest and arms like Rick's. In the, in the new heaven with new bodies, Chandra will be able to walk clearly and Dan will no longer be ugly. Can you imagine when all things are made new? A new heaven and a new earth. With new bodies, new aches, no aches, no pains, no sickness, no hurt. Can you imagine what life will be like? Oh, in the new heaven, we will be reunited with God. In the new heaven, everything will be restored. But there's another R I want you to think about, and that is the road to heaven. A number of years ago, 
a song came out called If You Can See Me Now. It says, if you can see me now, our prayers have been answered. I finally arrived. The healing that had been delayed is now realized. No one's in a hurry. There's no schedule to keep. We're all enjoying Jesus just sitting in his feet. If you can see me now, I'm walking the streets of gold. If you can see me now, I'm standing tall and whole. If you could see me now, you'd know I've seen his face. If you could see me now, you'd know the pain's erased. You wouldn't want me to ever leave this place. If you could only see me now. My light and temporary trials have worked out for my good. To know it brought in glory when I misunderstood. Though we've had our sorrows, they never can compare to what Jesus has in store for us. No language can share. You wouldn't want me to ever leave this place if you could only see me now. In heaven, we will be reunited with God. In heaven, things will be restored. And then the final R I'd like us to cover before we leave is the road to heaven. Turn with me, please, if you will, to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 7. In verse 13, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. Be on your guard against false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. Years ago, Oprah Winfrey, that great theologian, said we may all be on different roads, but they all lead to the same place. What a bunch of hooey. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, wide is the road and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. But narrow is the gate and narrow is the path that leads to heaven. All roads do not lead to the same place. And people say, well, as long as you're sincere, that's all that really matters. No, my friend, sincerity does not get you there. You can be sincerely wrong and miss heaven completely. Turn on the please to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 20. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 20. So Ahab summoned all the Israelites and gathered the prophets at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people didn't answer him a word. Then the, Elijah said to the people, I am the only remaining prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let two bulls be given to us. They are to choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces and place it on the wood, but not light the fire I will prepare. The other bull and place it on the wood, but not light the fire. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God who answers with fire, is he is God. And all the people answered, that's fine. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, since you are so numerous, choose for yourself one bull and prepare it first. Then call on the name of your God, but don't light the fire. So they took the bull that he gave them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Baal, answer us. But there was no sound. No one answered. Then they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them and said, Shout loudly, for he's a god. Maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he's wandered away, or maybe he's on the road. Perhaps he's sleeping and will wake up. 
They shouted loud, they cut themselves with knives and spears according to their custom until blood gushed over them. All afternoon they kept on raving until the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no sound, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near me. So all the people approached him. Then he repaired the Lord's altar that had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel will be your name. And he built an altar with the stones in the name of the Lord. And then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold about four gallons. Next he arranged the wood, cut up the bowl, and placed it on the wood. He said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the offering to be burned and on the wood. Then he said a second time, and they did it a second time. And then he said a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar. He even filled the trench with water at the time for offering the evening sacrifice. The prophet Elijah approached the altar and said, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that at your word I have done all these things. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that this people will know that you, the Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the Lord's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah ordered them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let even one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the Wadi Kishon and slaughtered them there. Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of a rainstorm. There was a showdown on top of Mount Carmel. The people of Israel, like some of the people in our country, they couldn't, they couldn't decide who they believed in. They couldn't decide what they believed in. They couldn't decide who was God. They couldn't decide what they wanted to do. They got a little bit of this and a little bit of that and hoped that everybody blessed them and everything worked down in the end. And Elijah told them, y'all need to decide who is God and decide whose side you're on. And the people didn't say a word. They were content with the way they, things were. He said, okay, all right, we'll do this. We'll take two bulls and we will have two altars and you lay yours there and I'll lay mine over here and y'all pray. And if your God is really God, let him send fire from heaven to consume that sacrifice. Now the Bible says that those 450 priests, man, they were praying. And they were they were dancing around. They were interceding. They were doing everything they knew to do. The Bible says by the middle of the day, nothing had happened. So they got out their knives and they got out their spears and they started cutting themselves as the Bible says, as was their custom. They started cutting themselves so the blood would flow, trying to get their God's attention. And the whole time Elijah's mocking them, where's your God? Shout loud or maybe he's asleep, you can wake him up. Where's your God? Let me tell you, my friend, because I'm going to dance all day long and pray, and then I start cutting myself. I am sincere. These people were doing everything they knew to do, and they were sincere. But they were sincerely gone. And Elijah went over and he rebuilt the altar. He took the bull and slaughtered it, and he laid it on the wood. He said, now y'all bring the water and pour it on there. They poured water on there. He said, now bring some more. And they, they brought some more and poured it on there. He said, bring some more. They brought some more and poured it on there. So much water. All, the bowl was wet. The wood was wet. There was water in the trench all the way around the altar. And then Elijah, that silly God-fearing man that didn't have any more sense than to believe God and to trust God. And asked God to do impossible things. Poor old Elijah didn't know any better than to take God at his word. He said, God, show these people that you are really God. And that I am your man. I'm speaking on your behalf. God sent fire from heaven. God sent fire from heaven. And it consumed the bull and it consumed the stones and it consumed the water. 
around the stone. This consumes everything. You see, my friends, there is only one God. And there is only one way to get there. And that is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. All roads don't lead to the same place. There is only one path. The Bible says that only by one name can man be saved. That is through the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, do you know Jesus Christ? Oh, I can, I can talk about the glories of heaven. And I can talk about the beauty of heaven. And I can talk about the, the restoration and the, the, the rebuilding of heaven. I can talk about all the majesty of heaven. Talk about the reunion of heaven. Man, I'm looking forward to that. But I'm scared to death that some of y'all are going to miss it. Because you're on the wrong road. You have never made that decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You don't have to do anything. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't do enough good stuff to get to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The only way to get to heaven is through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has already made. As he hung on the cross before he gave up the ghost, he cried out, it is finished. I have done it all. I have paid the price. The devil can take nothing away from what I've done, and you can't add a thing. My friend, do you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt? That if you were to die today, that you spend eternity with God in heaven. Let me tell you, it is as easy as A, B, C, A. Admit that you've sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You say, well, I'm not all that bad. I'm better than most people. My friend, that's not the standard God judges on. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. How many of you can meet that standard? I can't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Again, the Bible says, there is none righteous, no, not one. All of us have done something or not done something that has displeased God. All of us have fallen short of the mark. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Eternal separation from God. God doesn't send anybody to hell. We earned that trip. By the decisions we have made and the choices that we have made. Jesus said, come unto me all ye who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. And some of you have heard that still small voice of the Holy Spirit speak to you again and again and you have never taken that trip. Admit that you've sinned. B, believe on the Lord Jesus. Put all of your faith and all of your hope and all of your trust in him. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and seek his best. Confess your sins. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. You see, it's a package deal. Anytime you see Savior spoken of in the Bible, you also find Lord right there alongside it. Because when we're asking him to be our Savior, what we're telling him, telling him is we want him to be our Lord. We want him to be the boss in our life. We want him to take the wheel, to be in charge of our lives. We are promising to follow him as our Lord and our Savior. We confess our sins and ask him to forgive us our sins. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and sup with him and he with me. Oh, my friend, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Do you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today, you'd spend eternity with God? If not, would you please? Please do that today. Oh, yes, there are going to be some, some tears of regret when we first get to heaven. Oh, I imagine 
walking through the gate. I'll be crying. Oh, I, nowadays I cry for long song comes on the radio. I don't know what. <laughs> last night I was telling, I was telling Glad about the sermon for this morning, and I couldn't even tell her about it. I'm standing there crying behind the couch trying to tell her what I'm gonna preach on today. She's sitting there nodding her head. Can't you do anything without crying? I was getting pretty bad these days. I imagine we get to heaven and we walk in that gate and we're going to cry because of some of the friends we see there. But I imagine we'll turn around, look at that gate, and I'm going to cry because of some of the friends that I don't see there. Oh, where is such and such? Where is such and such? I, I knew she was going to make it. Oh, my friends, it's very easy to fool one another. And we can put on an act and pretend. Oh, Judas was so good at it that when they had the Lord's Supper in the upper room and Jesus said, one of y'all are going to betray me, Judas was such a good actor that all the rest of the disciples looked around and asked Jesus, is it me? Is it me? That's how good an actor Judas was. Oh, my friend, I hope you're not acting today. I pray that you actually have that relationship with Jesus Christ. And if not, that you will that you will establish that relationship today. That you admit that you've sinned, you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, you ask him to be your Lord and Savior, and you put all of your faith and all of your hope and all of your trust in him. And the Bible says that on the day that we do that, that we are given the Holy Spirit as a seal, a deposit, a down payment, a promise on better things coming. And Jesus said on the day that we do that, we were adopted into the family. We become part of the family of God. In John chapter 10, Jesus says on the day that we do that, that we are placed in his hand and we are placed in the hand of the Father and no one can pluck them out. My friend, do you know that you are a child of God? If not, would you do that today? Some of you, you have no doubt. If you were to die today, you spend eternity with God in heaven. But some of you can't remember the last time you invited someone else to go on that journey with you. Some of you, you can't remember the last time a friend saw such a difference, such a change in your life that they asked you, can you tell me about Jesus? My friend, the Lord did not save us and leave us here. So we could vacation. God left us here to be salt and light. Ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Representing him and telling them that Jesus who was once here is coming again. And you better be ready. Oh my friends, have you told somebody about Jesus? Heaven is going to be great. And I'm looking forward to it. I pray that you're going to meet me there. And then she'll take someone with you. Years ago, a deacon in a former church of mine, the first Sunday that I was at that church, my first Sunday as a pastor, he and his wife got up and sang a song, first time I'd ever heard it, and I love it to this day, called Hallelujah Square. I saw a blind, blind man tapping along, losing his way as he passed through the throne. Tears filled my eyes. I said, friend, you can I see. But with a smile on his face, he replied to me. I saw a cripple dragging his feet. He couldn't walk like we do down the street. I said, my friend, I feel sorry for you. But he said, up in heaven, I'm going to walk just like you. I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah Square. What a wonderful time we'll all have up there. We'll sing and praise Jesus and glory to share. And you'll not see one blind man in Hallelujah Square. I saw an old man gasping for breath. Soon to be gone as his eyes closed in death. He looked at me and said, boy, don't I look so blue? For I'm going up to heaven. Now how about you? I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah Square. What a wonderful time we'll all have up there. We'll sing and praise Jesus, his glory to share. We'll all live forever in Hallelujah Square.
my friend, I'm going. I got my ticket. I'm looking forward to that day. And I pray you'll join me there. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for loving us enough to send your son, Jesus Christ, so that we have the opportunity to have a relationship with you and to join you forever, forever in heaven. Oh, Lord God, I pray that if there is anyone here today who do, does not know you, that they will confess their sins to you, that they will ask you to forgive them and invite you into their heart to be their Lord and Savior. Lord, if there are any of us here today who are unfaithful laborers, who have ignored the harvest in the field, while we sit on our laurels and enjoy our leisure, Lord God, I pray that you'll convict us, that you will forgive us, and you will remind us that we are a rescue station, given a task to tell other people about Jesus Christ. Lord, please help us to represent you well. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.